All right, you found us again here on YouTube. Thanks for tracking us down. I'm meteorologist John Dawson. This is the Fox 26 tropical update. We're here every afternoon bringing you the latest of what's happening. Even when things are relatively quiet, we'll be here keeping you up to date on all the activity. And in this case, it's not relatively quiet. There's a lot going on out in the Atlantic. Definitely some busy stuff happening in the Pacific, the Eastern Pacific as well. So let's sort of just dive into things and we've really kind of been and, uh, I guess our focus in the, in the short term, at least, has been a little bit on Hurricane Earl because Hurricane Earl is the storm that's still growing in strength. And so that's what we'll talk about here for just a minute. Again, this will be the 4 p.m. update on Wednesday from all of this from the National Hurricane Center. 85 mile an hour winds are what we're currently looking at, and the movement beginning to speed up just a little bit, about eight miles an hour now. And we'll look for that speed to stay pretty consistent for the next 24 hours. And then once we get past that more into Friday, things are going to speed up at the end of the day through Thursday and into Friday. So uh, a little bit of a closer view here. You can see that uh, it is expected to become a category two hurricane by Thursday afternoon. And then really as it crosses over Bermuda or near Bermuda, uh, begin a category four hurricane with maximum sustained winds at 130 miles an hour. And then notice how it races from sat from Friday into Saturday, uh, be possibly even losing some of its tropical characteristics and decreasing in its strength very quickly as it moves through the Atlantic. And of course, once it gets up a little bit further to the north, conditions aren't as favorable for the strengthening to continue to take place. So we'll see that weaken for sure uh, once Earl gets a little bit further uh, to the north. So we talked about all the activity that's out there. We're going to dive into some of those more specifics in a minute, but just I like to show you those hurricane hunters all Always so thankful for what they're doing uh, when they get in and some of them are flying actually through the middle of the hurricane and you can see that's what's happening here with this Air Force reconnaissance flight that was during uh, the day today. It was crossing through that eye of the storm several different times. It's dropping those drop sons out the back which fall through the atmosphere, taking measurements as it does so and they're trying to find all the details they can gather as far as anything that you can think of that's a weather related term. That's what they're gathering that data and they're sending that up to the satellites so that they could put those in the supercomputers and eventually help the Hurricane Center with the computer modeling and create that forecast that I just showed you of that cone uh, where it's expected to go. So this flight has already finished all of its work heading back down to the US Virgin Islands. They've got a sort of a, a remote base there where they can launch out of uh, and that's what they're doing at this point. The Air Force planes are doing that, so that's what we're looking at. So looking a little bit uh, better organized, looking a little bit more of that clear rotation, almost even trying to show a little bit of an eye. And I think as we expecting the uh, expecting Earl to strengthen, we'll expect that eye to get a little bit more uh, formed and you'll see See that classic structure a little bit more of a hurricane with that clear rotation uh, and it'll begin to strengthen even more uh, like as it is now and get to the stronger state as we talked about, maybe even a category four hurricane eventually. So I just wanted to point out a couple tropical waves that the Hurricane Center is also kind of keeping an eye on. Uh, one of them is just sitting right on the coast of Africa, so it is way out there. But the interesting thing about that one is how far down to the south it's located. And when something starts this far down to the south, it increases its chance at least to make it into the Caribbean and then possibly even into the Gulf of Mexico. So when we have a, a wave like this that's this interesting this early on and this far south, it kind of gets my attention just a little bit. So we're definitely going to keep an eye on that one, even though it's very far out there. Then there's one that's a little bit closer into the eastern portions of the Atlantic. This is highly favored uh, to form a 70% chance that it's expected to form into a tropical system. So I would not be surprised that this is where we're going to have our next named storm uh, within the next five days. And so and maybe even the next two days. So there's a possibility that we could have three named storms in the Atlantic in the same time period because yes, Danielle is still with us now. Not sure how long Danielle's actually going to be able to hang in there. You can see uh, even just in these 12 hours of imagery how things 
kind of fallen apart here. It's not nearly as organized and not nearly as well put together, but strong enough that it's still uh, going to be uh, considered a hurricane at this point with maximum sustained winds at 80 miles an hour. Uh, and then we're going to sort of drop those characteristics and we're going to begin to fall apart quite quickly once we get into Thursday. That 70 mile an hour winds um, and then we'll continue to see a little loop to loop there and then this is going to move over. This is pr probably uh, going to be a s bring some stormy weather for portions of Europe uh, when it's all over with. That's going to be a little bit further down the line, but we'll see. Danielle won't be a hurricane uh, when it starts impacting Europe, but I talked about that next named storm in the Atlantic that we're looking at. Fiona, that's what we're going to name it. Uh, and again, in case you sometimes are wondering where these names come from, the World Meteorological Organization makes these up. That's a thing. The WMO, look them up if you want to. They're the ones that come up with this, these lists of names, and there's six lists. This is the list that we're using this year, and Fiona is the next name on the list. And I do think there is a possibility that Danielle, Earl, and Fiona will all be in the Atlantic at the same time if Fiona can get its act together quick enough. Now, that's all in the Pacific. Let's switch gears, talk about the Pacific for just a minute, the Eastern Pacific. And this is something that's probably going to impact the U.S., not directly as a hurricane, but there's going to be a lot of extra moisture kind of pushing up for portions of the U.S., and that could create even maybe some flooding problems with the extra uh, moisture that's going to be moving in. So, Hurricane K, uh, Category 2 hurricane with maximum sustained winds right now at 100 miles an hour. These blue shading on the Baja Peninsula there, that's representing the severe, that's representing the uh, tropical storm warnings. And then there's a little bit of red kind of mixed in as well. That's going to be the hurricane warnings because as we move through uh, time here and we get to Thursday, tomorrow afternoon, we are expecting a Category 1 hurricane right off of the coast, not expected to make a landfall at this point, but right off the coast of that Baja Peninsula. So that's close enough that the hurricane force winds are expected, and that's why we've got the tornado warning and uh, sorry, the hurricane warning that's in there. And then this yellow shading is a tropical storm watch because it's a little bit further away. Uh, that's going to be Friday and into Saturday uh, when we see that. So when we get a little bit closer here, just to kind of see where all this kind of lines up, this all this moisture, uh, all the impacts in the rain as a tropical storm is going to be able to push off a little bit further to the north out of Mexico and into Arizona, the southwest corner of Arizona, as well as portions of California. So we're going to be seeing that area get some rain that's related to Hurricane K. We're not going to get the winds, but we're going to get some of that rain that's kind of getting pushed up to that. And again, that could cause Definitely some problems for that part of the country. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that it's several days away before that's going to be happening uh, towards the end of the week. So quick reminder, of course, it would be great if you wanted to connect with me on social media. I'm at John Dawson Fox 26. That's where you'll find me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Also, I try to leave some comments below here and so you'll see me sort of checking in. If you want to try to find me on YouTube, it's meteorologist John Dawson. It's a little bit of a, a, a long type. If you'll just look for my comments and you can subscribe that way if you want to. And hopefully you're already subscribed to Fox 26. That's would be great if you're not. And the Fox 26 weather app, all of these tropical information that I've been showing you, you can see those forecast cones on the Fox 26 weather app. Even if you're not in the Houston area, it's a great app to have. Go ahead and get that downloaded from your favorite app store. Thanks again for finding us today. We'll be back here tomorrow afternoon with another tropical update.